Today I'm doing a saison, and not just any saison, but uh, a cloudberry saison. The recipe I pretty much nailed in previous recipes. I will of course put the recipe down in the descriptions below. Um, but today I will be using uh, the Pilsen malt and in a true saison style, taking a bit of everything I have. Uh, a bit of uh, torrified oats. I had some torrified wheat left, and I might as well use it in my saison. Of course, some wheat and uh, a nice edge of uh, aromatic malt as well to get that Belgian flavors going. The yeast will be Safael BE134. I've used it to, to great success, be success before. Um, the trick is to ferment to start off fermenting uh, well, as they recommend uh, on a bit on the lower end at the beginning, let's say 20 degrees ambient temperature because the, the, the activity is super high in this yeast so the, the temperature will actually raise itself to, a bit, to the mid 20s but then I will be finishing off it at the, at the warmer end and that will give me some kind of citrusy flavors from this yeast and I'm, as I said, very content with this yeast. For those of you who don't know, cloudberries grow in bogland or in Swedish myrmark, similar to this. It's wet and, uh, lots, and thereby lots of mosquitoes and other flying insects as it's uh, a perf perfect environment for them to lay eggs in. This year we were blessed by great winds while picking them and on top of that 2021 was somewhat of a record year. some final footage. Uh, the beer ended up being pretty bright as you can imagine from the malt composition and adding the yeast and uh, why I still choose to use the plastic bucket for this case is because the saison yeast contains a strain called diastaticus and uh, that is a it is a terrible fermenter, it will actually ferment down to 1.000 uh, and I do not want to risk to have that in any other batch so as a safety precaution I use the same plastic bucket for all my saison. Here is the saison fermenting away, it's the second day of fermentation and as you can see, the high poison has um, fallen down a bit. Uh, it's still bubbling away a bit here and there, but this is a very fast fermenter. So typically, even if I had bought it up to a higher uh, temperature, it would have fer fermented faster. Uh, now it is at around 24 degrees because I didn't want to stress the yeast too much before uh, putting in the final part here, which is the, the cloudberries. So the, the goal is here that uh, I will put these cloudberries that I have uh, pasteurized uh, in this kettle to 80 degrees. So um, there should be no bacteria. And before that, I should say I have actually frozen them because uh, the ice crystals, which are formed when the berries are frozen, will break the cell structures of the berries and let all the liquids out. As you can see, it's more of a soup now than, um, than what it would have been before I froze them. Then they were just nice berries, like raspberries, for example. Um, so that is done. Uh, and I also put some sugar into it because from what I could see on the internet, the berries would have equaled something around uh, the original gravity of 10.050 or 1.050 um, and therefore I put a bit of sugar to, to match the OG of the beer and somehow I will have to fit them into this rather small bag 
Um, so, but I think it's um, lots of liquids in here, so they will that will just pour through the bag. Um, also, I have to say it's one kilo of berries originally, so it's quite a lot. And 2021 was a record year, I said. So um, usually, I mean, one kilo that would go for around uh, 20 euros at least, at least. So it's a bit of a luxury here. Before even touching anything, I just wanted some footage of the, the Corison. I always find it's a very interesting process when the everything lies on the top, the activity is on the top. Um, for me, nature is very interesting in this way. You might even have the chance to spot a few bubbles around here popping up. So, it's going to be interesting. I hope I don't mess up too much. In the end, I managed to get them in a bag. In the bag, uh, it is half full, which is very, um, which I'm very happy about. Uh, so they can swim a bit freely here. Uh, when I when I brought out the frozen lamb from the freezer, I thought there was no way that they would fit. But uh, then, as expected, the, the the liquids that had flown out from the berries due to the crystallization um, really had an effect on the total volume of uh, the, the, the solid berries. Uh, so now it's uh, closed up. Um, I will let it <laughs> swim here for a couple of days. Uh, actually, yeah, maybe even more than a couple of days, just to be sure that I get all the juice out of the berries. So yeah, even I'm even gonna, going to stir it around like this a bit too, to ensure that they get mixed up as much as possible and it's yeah I think um, hopefully they will float around here a bit so that they will not just end up in the bottom of the of the beer let's see now what happens and uh, I'm very excited about the end results I've just bottled the beer and this is what is left the yeast and the cloudberries somewhat wet state still. It would be interesting to see what they taste like. So it's bottling day and meanwhile I might as well do a taste review that is long overdue. So I've drunk this a couple of times already, more than a few times I would say actually. Um, and uh, I would just let you see the color which is pretty standard for the mall compositions, pretty bright. What I would expect of a saison. Like so. The aroma. If you know how cloudberry smells and tastes like, you might notice the aroma of the beer. Um, but it might as well, for a person who doesn't know what it uh, smells like, it might as well be another yeast uh, component. So let's see how the, the taste turned out. And honestly here, um, I would say that this one doesn't taste too much cloudberry and I think that the um, reason for that well it does taste cloudberry but it, it's not what you immediately notice and what I would say that that is the cause of is that um, the the saison it really ferments all the sugars and for a berry you would normally accompany the taste with uh, a, quite a lot of sweetness really so it's not that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a failed beer, it's just that I think if you should go for a fruit, 
in my personal opinion, Saison is not the most uh, uh, Saison is is not uh, the most um, optimal yeast for that. As I personally would like to have some sweetness along with the berry taste. Now the cloudberry taste ends up to be a bit earthy in the background. You can really just uh, get the hints that you wouldn't really do eating out the berry, just the hints of what the components of the non-sweet components of the berry would be, which is quite interesting itself. But uh, if I would redo this, I would take maybe some kind of German, German ale yeast for this case. All in all, um, or I might as well just mention um, and uh, as a saison, it isn't a too bad saison. I'm happy with it and, and the yeast I chose I'm familiar with and it's a great one. Really, if you have this one, I can't see, really see the reason for going with a liquid saison yeast. It's a really uh, a strong recommendation from my side.